Hi, everybody. I'm Scott Ellis. And I'm Callie Lewis. Today on Geek Beat Live, Aereo is still having trouble. Power your devices with wind on the go. Headphones that monitor your heart rate. The show is all about sharks and lasers. <laughs> and the Navy is using unmanned aircraft. It all starts now. <laughs> Good to be here. Yes. How are you guys today? How's the studio audience? How's everybody? Yeah. <laughs> we have uh, a good one. That wasn't very enthusiastic, was it, Scott? Come on, I think they can do better than that. How, how are you guys? Uh, yeah. uh, that's a little better. I don't know. Look at Carter there. He's like a little... Uh... Yeah, he's working. <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to focus. So, Scott, welcome to Geek Beat Live. Thank you. It's good to be here. You've been here before, but... I've, it's been a while. It has been a while. Yeah, and I'm staying this time. Oh, I'm not going staying. away. Uh, so, everybody is uh, probably wondering where John P. is. They probably are. Well, Should we tell them? Well, I have him kind of locked away in his office at the moment because we have to pay for this building. So yeah, somebody's got to work. He's working. No. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we, you did your first uh, scripted day, daily episode uh, this week. No, last week. Last week. Last week. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun. I had a good time. Got some good feedback. So plan to do some more. Awesome. So you guys, make sure you're letting uh, our new hosts, Scott Ellis, David Foster, Michael Artsis, know what you think. And I remember my first uh, episode that I had to do scripted, like, how long ago the was that? The prompter is is harsh. Uh, eight years. Yeah, it's been a while. It's a hard thing to the do. The prompter was, was a little it? bit hard, but it wasn't. You know, I've done it a few times. And it was no more difficult than the stuff that we do at CES when I'm just yeah. kind of having to exactly. think about it on the fly. So yeah. yeah, I mean, you've been out on the CES floor for several, for a few, a few years, years at us. least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good, all yeah. good stuff. I hope you guys the, are enjoying it. Off the floor and into the studio now. So yeah, here we go. <laughs> having fun. Finally, so um, we had some pretty cool stuff happening today, actually. We had a big announcement. Not us. Well, yeah, somebody kind of did something for us. Yes. That's kind of cool. You guys remember Steve Thompson, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the laser harpist. I mean, he's way more than a laser harpist. But yeah, he I'm plays trombone and some other instruments. He's a talented guy. He is a talented guy. He's very nice, too. <laughs> he is actually one of the nicest uh, guys that I've ever, ever met. Not that I'm putting you down or no, anything. No, that's okay. I mean, Fine. <laughs> so actually, Steve Thompson, you guys remember uh, during the grand opening party, we had Steve Thompson here, and he played a brand new theme. It was the Doctor Who theme, yep. but kind of his own version of it. Take a look. <laughs> hey, John, come in here. What do you got? You got to check this out. Hey, Callie and John, Geeks in the Geek House and Geeks of the World. It's Steve Thompson here. I'm back from my awesome trip to the US where I got to play the laser harp at the Geek House opening party. Thank you so much for inviting me down. I had a brilliant time. But I'm back in the UK now, and I thought when I got back here, wouldn't it be a bit of a giggle to release one of those tracks that I did as a download? And as we all know, Doctor Who is 50 years old this year. The new season of Doctor Who starts on the 23rd of August here in the UK. And of course, we've got a new Doctor, which is always really exciting. So it's got to be the Doctor Who theme. <laughs> Got a nice little groove. I saw Fun you stuff. dancing. I was, I was moving a little. Yeah, yeah. I don't dance very well, but I try. <laughs> well, after, after that, he actually sits there and, and tells us what he's going to do, which is release that for like everyone to buy. Yeah. You can actually own his version of the Doctor Who theme, which is 
pretty darn cool. Yep, and I think it's already out there on iTunes and a bunch of other places. Yeah, it is. It's out there, geekbit.tv slash Doctor Who theme. Yep. Um, now, he also did something even really cooler than just releasing a Doctor Who theme. So some of the proceeds from the sale, if you go out... All of them. All of the proceeds from the sale, if you go out and you buy uh, the Doctor Who theme, his version of it, on iTunes or... Uh, in Google Play and wherever else it is out there online. We've got it on the geekbeat.tv forward slash Doctor Who theme. Uh, they're going to donate that stuff to the, the Geek House. How cool is that? Yeah. What a wonderful gesture. Uh, so in that video, he said uh, if we get to, like, because he broke it down, the pricing of how yeah. much, right, um, uh, he proceeds actually come out of that. And it's like 60 cents for 60 cents roughly for each purchase. For each purchase. Yeah. So he was like, if we get to, uh, how much is it, a million downloads, he wants to open up uh, Geek House UK. So mm. go out, buy it now. <laughs> Thank you to Steve Thompson. <laughs> Let's see if we can get to that million. Let's do and, it. And uh, maybe open a new geek house, huh? I'm, I'm all not for sure it. about that. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, you guys go take a look at that right now, right while we are going to commercial break. Uh, but don't watch all of that. They have to pay for the bills, so they got to watch the commercials. Yeah, watch the commercials, too. please. Hang out. But before you do, make sure you leave us a fame spot. Geekbeat.tv slash fame spot. What's the fame spot question of the day? Would you get into a cage with a shark? What? Well, I, don't I told know. you the show is all about sharks today, so. All right, I, I gotta think it? about my answer. I know you would. I would. I really want to. Let us know. Geekbeat.tv slash fame spot. Welcome back to Geek Beat Live. Hey guys, I'm Callie Lewis. I'm That's Scott, Ellis. Scott Ellis. And this is, as he said, Geek Beat Live. So we're having a good time. I hope you guys are. I think that the uh, live audience has fallen asleep, but uh, I know that the chat room is going strong. Oh, they're going to perk up a little bit. We just gave them all coffee, so. <laughs> and Red Bull at the same time. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. Can you handle that, Scott? I, I've actually had a couple today, so yeah, I'm doing good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, Red Bull is a staple around here now at yeah. the Geek House because it's in our Livid Lobster cocktail It is recipe. It is. So you guys, if you haven't seen that, I don't know, geek, just go to geekbeat.tv slash live 145. Ben has all the links there. Yep. And you guys watching on TV, if you don't know... We are, I mentioned the chat room. We are actually live streaming this. You can catch us online, not only on TV. So you can get us anytime you want. I don't know why you would want to do that, but uh, that's available. Why wouldn't you? Geekbeat.tv. Anytime, anywhere. <laughs> yeah. It's time for some news. Let's do some news. We got a lot to talk about. Yeah, we do. A lot happened. So Aereo this week uh, is actually still encountering issues. What happened there? Uh, seems that they lost a court case where they were actually, um, they were broadcasting, they were grabbing basically uh, TV shows off the airwaves yeah. and then rebroadcasting them and they kind of got slapped down for that. Well, so, I mean, this, this was a whole Supreme Court yeah. case situation and it went on for a long time. And so then recently the Supreme Court said, you guys, you got to stop. And so they just cut operations completely while they figured out what to do. Um, but there, I mean, we've had conversations with Gary Shapiro, gp.tv slash live 145, if you want to see that both, the, the arguments on both sides. Yeah. I mean, to me, Aereo really should have been allowed to do what they were doing because... And they've tried a couple of different approaches to keep things going. They yeah. tried to change their licensing arrangement and how they were setting all that stuff up, but uh, they still got slapped down this week. Yeah, so they yeah. tried to um, become kind of classified as a cable provider. Yep. And so in that scenario, they would what they would pay royalties yes. instead of just rebroadcasting that and so ch charging their subscribers. Um, and I think they started court. to do that, but the court still said, yeah, so, no, you don't. Not going to happen. What do you think of that? Sorry. I don't know. I've, I've got... Um, Would you use them? <sighs> if they were allowed to be in business? <laughs> if I watched much TV at all? Um, <laughs> You know, I probably would. Yeah. I, I tend to, you know, when I do watch TV, it tends to be online in one form or another. So, yeah, I yeah. would. Yeah. 
I, I really hope that Aereo finds a way um, to exist in, and do what, they've, what they do. But um, my initial thought is that they're, as, as much as I hate to say it, I think they're going to be the ones to pave the way and go through all the trouble yeah. and get shot down, get shot down, and get shot down over and over, and then somebody else will come along and wind up being the guys that actually kind of accomplish. It, it would this definitely mission. not be the first time we've seen that happen. Yeah. So unfortunately, it does happen. Yeah. Sometimes people have to pave the way and just kind of fight their way through it. And yeah, they're not the only ones that are in a fight right now. No, Adam Who else? Carolla. You guys know Adam from, he's a comedian, yeah. talk show host, does the Adam Carolla show, has a podcast. Yeah, I've been on a panel Funny with Funny guy, before. that's right, you did some stuff with him. It's blog world, yeah. yeah. Uh, so apparently he has, uh, he was in a lawsuit over patents that were filed by, I'm going to get the name wrong here. <laughs> Personal Audio LLC. Thank you very much. And they were basically, uh, they have patents that apply to uh, playlists and some things like that. They're these sort of very broad far-reaching patents. People like to call them patent trolls yeah. because they're so broad that they just, they, they are able to claim on patents and, you know, nobody really, it's like stuff that everybody uses. It's like patenting bread. Yeah, and it's the kind of stuff that to me just should not be patentable. Right. I mean, you just, it's so broad, it's not that specific. It comes across as, you know, well, we're just gonna file this patent and then we're gonna go after everybody we can. And right. that's kind of patent troll nature, but, Adam Carolla decided to fight back. Yes. And he went to crowdfunding to raise some money for that. Mm -hmm. Got about a half a million dollars to, uh, to go towards legal fees and to fight that. And they went into court and eventually settled. Now, but he has he way he went way past that five hundred thousand dollar goal that he raised, yes. or, or the uh, amount that he raised. It's like a, a million and a half. Yeah, I think one point five. Spent just working on these legal cases. Yeah, and he was not gonna back down. He really wanted to fight that thing. He wanted to take it a lot further. Right. And we don't know what the terms of the settlement were, but that they eventually came to some sort of agreement. And uh, their reason for settling um, was basically saying that, well, okay, these people who are, are using our, our, our patent um, aren't really making enough money, so it's not worth suing them. So we're just gonna let it go. How benevolent. I know, right? I mean, this company comes in, they're like, <laughs> how dare you use our patent? And then uh, Adam Carroll, because these companies, what they do is they go in and they try and just intimidate people. And if Adam Carolla spends a million and a half dollars in legal fees to fight back, eventually they're like, well, this really yeah. isn't worth our time. And so they'll just focus on the smaller people mm -hmm. and try and intimidate them and try and get money from them, settlements and all of that. That's the way they work. That is the way they work. And that uh, sucks, doesn't I'm, it? It does suck, but I'm also very grateful for people like Adam that are willing to go in and fight that fight and stick it out. So Adam, thank you very much if you're watching. I know you are. <laughs> I know you are. Fight the good fight. Keep it up. <laughs> well, um, Sprint and T-Mobile are kind of at it uh, this week. So Sprint launched, uh, they had these Framily packs? I don't think they're framily. Family friends. packs. Family, friends, friends, and family. friends and family packs. People you know. <laughs> um, it's, it's a share pack, right? Yeah. Um, so they announced new packs, and they are offering now um, uh, 20 gigs of unlimited data for only $160 a month um, for four phones. So you have four phones on the plan with your friends and family, pay 160 bucks. For 20 gigs, that's not that's quite a bit, but that's quite a bit though. That is. You would think. I mean, I know as, as techies that we are, that we would be like massive users of data. But when I look at my plan, I don't use all that much. I, I use right. maybe around four gigs or so. Yeah. See, that's the thing. That's a myth. It is MythBusters time. <laughs> Busted. Yeah. No, a lot of people think that they need um, a lot more data than they yeah. actually do. If you look at what you actually use, you're probably using a lot less than you think you are. Yeah. So something to pay attention to. Something for sure. definitely to pay attention to. Now, $160 for 20 gigs is a lot less than what AT and T, Verizon offer 10 gigs for the same price. Yeah. Now, is that that's across those four to ten lines? 
but it doesn't yeah, necessarily include correct. the four to ten lines, or is it just one big plan? You you have to bring in your own phone, okay. but it is across, like you share that, that data. Gotcha. All okay. right, well, um, it is time to move on. Carter is looking at me very angrily, so uh, we're gonna go to commercial break. Is that what that means? That is what that means. He's not I mean, just- Carter's upset. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's the fame spot of the day? Sharks. All right. Would you get in the water in a cage with a shark? Now, the shark is not in the cage with you. The shark's in the water. You're in the cage. Wait, the do water. I get outside the cage? No, you stay in the cage. But would you go cage diving with sharks? That's the fame <laughs> spot. Would you do it? I would. Geekbeat.tv slash fame spot. Let us know. Hey, guys. Welcome back to Geekbeat Live. I'm Callie Lewis. And I'm Scott Ellis. And... You guys are awesome for just hanging out. I wasn't really talking to you, Dave Curley, over there. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I was talking to you. It's good to have you guys here today. Thanks for joining us. Oh, all right. It is time to get to the gadgets of the week. Yeah, I've been looking forward to this. Let's I go. I am very excited. So we just got a new 3D printer from Monoprice yep. in the studio. We've been playing with that. Um, we also got a 3D scanner from Matter and Form, so we've been playing with that. So this week has been all 3D everything. Now, what's really cool is there's this Kickstarter project that's out. It's called Sculptify David, and they are using dog pellets as the filament instead of the filament. They're using dog Kay. pellets for the ink, not the ink, but the stuff. Did you say the, dog pellets? Yeah, they're, they're dog no, pellets. No, they're not, they're not using dog pellets. They're using plastic pellets. Oh. Yeah. That would be kind of that would be kind of plastic awkward. Yeah, plastic pellets. pellets. That makes a whole lot more yeah. sense. I was thinking about how they that were going to try and keep the smell down. That would not be good. Okay. No. <laughs> so it's <laughs> Geek House is going to the dogs. <laughs> All so, right. so okay, so plastic pellets. Plastic makes, pellets makes a lot more sense. So they feed the plastic pellets through the 3D printer. Instead of using the filament strings. Right. So basically they've been able to cut the price significantly because they've taken out a bunch of steps because the way they create the filament, they actually start with the pellets. And somebody had the bright idea of, hey, why don't we just skip all this in-between stuff and just make a 3D printer where we can just use the pellets. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. So now when you say, you know, cut the price, my thing just messed up. So um, It's significant. <laughs> It's uh, the two pack bound of pellet, two pack, two bound, two pound, pound <laughs> bag of pellets That's is about hard eighteen. To say, is about eighteen bucks, whereas a two point two pound spool is about forty seven or forty eight dollars. Wow. So it's that's a big jump. Okay, but the printer itself is. Also, I mean, it's still significant of a price because yeah, they're not cheap. The early bird um, price on the Kickstarter project is still twenty seven hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, but when you talk about three D printers, you're gonna pay a hefty price if you want to be able to make your own stuff. Yep. But they'll be able to put different colors and different kinds of pellets in it's there. It's not so. dual color, is it? Um, no. no, not at the same time. At least I don't think so. Right. But you know, if they want to send us one to test out, we would be more than happy to try. Of course, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're interested in this, um, it does end September 18th. So you got a little ways to go. They plan to ship units by May of next year. And uh, like I said, 2,700 bucks for the early bird price. It's still a little ways out there, but there's all kinds of fun things happening in the 3D printing world. There is. There is, all kinds like of cool stuff. Like 3D printing underwear. I'm not as familiar with that one. We'll have to take a look. Or a wind turbine? How about a wind turbine? <laughs> so the Air Energy 3D from Omni 3D is a, a wind turbine, and it's not a, um, it's not a fan like what you're used to seeing. It's more right. of the kind of spirally type of wind turbine. Like what they put on the water tower across from the old office, if you remember seeing oh, those. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that is actually 3D printed, and it is used uh, to generate electricity from wind so that you can power your devices and all that kind of stuff. So this actually is, is a 300-watt yeah. uh, air turbine, and it folds up. It's portable, guys, so you could, you could have you know, power anywhere you go at any time, camping. Oh, that would be perfect. Yeah, to go out going camping out. and keep your devices charged up. Because you mean, know, when uh, you go out in the woods and you're camping, mm -hmm. you really need to be on 
on social media. Of course all the time. you do. You need to make sure <laughs> that you're doing your Facebook and Twitter status updates. Yeah, campfire. That is the most important thing. Yeah. So this thing actually looks really, really cool. I it does. love this. Uh, but it's hard to imagine that thing folding up and taking it. So it's going to be. I mean, it's going to be a little bigger than just putting in your backpack. Yeah, not sure how it folds important. down, but yeah. But so it, it's uh, five hundred dollars on Kickstarter. Um, they expect to be able to drop that production price once they're out of the Kickstarter process to about three hundred fifty dollars, but which is actually a little different than most people do. They usually have a, a smaller price for yeah. Kickstarter and then a higher price after that. But this is a completely different type of it's it's know, pretty thing. cool i think you know having a few of these around your house or taking them with you when you're going places and being able to charge yeah. things anywhere you are and have that much power yeah. 300 watts will power a number of things so that's that's pretty significant that's fun stuff so as you guys know john and i've been doing geek fit uh going to the gym working out with jeff duelli making ourselves better hopefully Absolutely. <laughs> you've been doing it too. I have been doing it too, and I'm having fun. Yeah, you've seen a lot of progress. I have, and I'm and in the middle of a challenge right now. I'm oh, yeah. doing 24 workouts in 25 days. Ooh, only one day off. Only one day off. Wow. I haven't missed one yet, so we're going to hang job. in there. Let's we'll see if I make it. How long have you been going? Uh, today will be, uh, I'm going to go after the show, so today okay. will be day number five. Nice. So it's kind of early. Okay. Can't skip any days yet. So <laughs> you're going to, well, we'll see. You have to keep us updated on yeah. social media. But how would you like a gadget for the gym? Well, because you like the, the Stairmaster, right? Mm -hmm. How about some head, headphones, some earbuds that measure your heart rate and tell you when you're in the fat burning zone? I love it. When can I have them? That would be awesome, wouldn't now. it? They're actually just teasing us right now. It's uh, SMS Audio Biosport earphones. You know, it's actually 50 cents. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm getting corrected in my ear. It's <laughs> 50 cents. 50 cent. Yeah. Uh, usually Curtis I'm on Jackson. top of that. But uh, they are, they're teasing it. It's being produced, it's a technology being produced by Intel, so it at least has some power behind it. So I'm really excited about that. The sensor in the ear and the uh, headphones are all one piece, so it's in there. And you can imagine. Because your, your heart rate, I mean, your, your pulse is, is kind of going throughout your body, right? Yeah. But uh, I would imagine that they, that would be pretty effective. I don't know. I'm sure they're going to test them pretty thoroughly. I'm excited. I would love to try a pair because when I do heart rate monitoring now, you know, I have to wear a chest strap and a watch and everything oh, yeah. else. And I've got my earbuds in. Usually to just to be able to plug in some earbuds and know what we're doing would be, yeah, that exactly. would be awesome. Ben says it's Fitty Friday. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all right. We are going to go to commercial break. Is that time again? I know, it's just, we're having so much fun and then they keep making us go pay the bills. So you guys help us out by watching those commercials. If you're watching the live stream, then stick around, we'll talk to you in between. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. I'm Scott Ellis, welcome back to Geek Beat Live. And I'm Callie Lewis. I'm having fun. Um, I already said that. Did you guys <laughs> know about our awesome Geek Beat mugs? No, do tell. Oh. <laughs> These <laughs> things are awesome. They're like 16 ounces. Um, and so that's bigger than most coffee cups, right? Yes. People have been getting them in the shipments and tweeting all about them. Uh, I think these are awesome anyway that's what they we're are. drinking out of i saw some questions in the chat room coffee really does taste better out of them in my opinion i would agree I don't know about you. that's why i can't stop <gasps> drinking it oh my gosh i forgot to taste the coffee jason Wynn is in town and he got me coffee like what was that one taste what was that that flavor you're making me crazy oh, that and sounds some yummy. other fun stuff <laughs> it's in the coffee drawer at the geek house uh, I got to go try that after we're done. But before we go, we're we're not done yet. Oh no, we're a long ways from done. We got we got to talk about sharks. But before that, we want to hear where you guys are from. It is time for a Geek Beat check-in right. for the live audience. You tell us right now where you're watching from. We're watching the chat room. Go. Where are you guys at? <laughs> Southwest Cork, Ireland. Wow, and the Lancaster, first one. Lancaster, UK. Uh, Catchwick, Netherlands. Aiken, Aiken South, South Carolina. Carolina. Go ahead. 
Crit. <laughs> Austria. I just passed him the hard one. Nice. <laughs> St. George, Utah. Plifferston, New oh. Pennsylvania. Augusta, Georgia, Saint Somerville, New Jersey. My dad lives there. <laughs> Augusta, Georgia. In that area. Somerville, Athens, New Jersey. Uh, New Jersey. Stockton, California. Boca Raton, Florida. Tyler, Texas. Edwards, Big Michigan. Kokomo, Indiana. You gotta go fast. Canton, Ohio. I can't. Somewhere in Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hard one, too. Houston, Kansas City. Texas. Brisbane, Australia. Louisville. Frog it. Frog Lynn not Kopling, Texas. Sweden. I hope I got that even close. <laughs> Croatia. Um, Allendale, Michigan. Lincoln, Wisconsin. Victory uh, Park, Boston, Dallas, Texas. Go for it. Croatia again. Quick, uh, quick. Why are you throwing all these? Denmark. Jules Where are you? Mind, Denmark. I can't even Gothenburg, see where you Sweden. Are. Croatia, Tyler, Rolandia, Texas. Rolandia, Geek House, Finland. <laughs> Allendale, uh, Michigan. Kennesaw, Georgia. Victory Park, Dallas. Lake Winnes, uh, Gap, somewhere. Gap, France. Sacramento, California. Jules Koblenz, Mind, Denmark. Koblenz, Germany. Gothenburg, Sweden. Framers Branch, Texas. Pixitani, New Jersey. Sweden. More Athens, Drummond, Greece. Drummond, Norway. Buckingham Croatia, Palace. Europe. Your Gap, Highness. France. <laughs> what? Buckingham Palace. Nice. The Queen is watching. Awesome, Your Highness. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> North Devon, UK. Tallahassee, Florida. Uh, Santos, Brazil. San Diego, California. New Jersey. Wow, you guys are awesome. And everywhere. How cool Thanks for is tuning it? in to have people from all over the world. And you know what's really cool about that is that it's not just them watching us, it's that this is that community that you guys are a part of. Yeah. And you can go to geekbeat.tv slash live and chime in on the chat room 24-7. Yep. I love you guys. We're there as often as we can I'm be. I'm getting all sentimental. But it's, Don't it's cry. not a very good thing to get sentimental when we're about to talk about sharks. Yeah, let me cheer you up a little bit. Let's start talking about some sharks. Um, I'm sorry, did you just tell me you were gonna cheer me up? by talking about sharks? Yeah, so this one is a, a fun story. You guys might have seen this. It's been all over the social media channels. Uh, apparently, sharks are not always at the top of the food chain. We're used to thinking about sharks what eating other mean? things, but in this case, a Goliath grouper fish Goliath was caught on camera grouper. eating a four to five foot shark. What, so these can we guys, take a look? Do we have a video? Oh yeah, check this out. Wait, the shark is on hook. Yeah, so these guys are uh, fishing, and it looks like they've maybe hooked a shark or... Um, it got caught. Actually got I'm one. I'm sure it just got caught. No, I think caught. he's got it on a line. <laughs> um, okay. But uh, I think at this point it looks more Wait, like what is bait. that? What is that? <gasps> and that is a giant grouper. <gasps> oh, yeah. my gosh. That, wait, can we play that back? <laughs> How big was that thing? It's a little hard to believe. They get huge. How? They can get up to 800 pounds and 10 feet long. 800, wow. That's a big fish. And oh my gosh, and Dave says they're really, really good on fish tacos. <laughs> yeah, those are how, big tacos. How would you know? So apparently they, they do <laughs> occasionally eat small sharks as a part of their regular diet. Wow, So that is, that's wow. something to see. We do grouper week, not shark week. We <laughs> <laughs> this is the first official start of Grouper right. Week right here. Giant oh, that's going to be a thing. I week. like it. <laughs> wow, that is insane. That video has had over 9 million views. Yeah, the thing's gone crazy. Like, I've seen uh, it like 10 times in my feed. I guess I was too busy watching um, cat, cat videos, videos yeah. to have seen the giant yeah. grouper. You should have been watching grouper videos. <laughs> <laughs> I'll search that out next time. Trying to figure out how we're going to print things with dog pellets or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what other? Shark. More shark news. Sorry. Moving on. We also have, uh, so Google has been running undersea cables, fiber and all right. that good stuff. And you got to get it from one into the other. One way or another. And apparently they have had a problem with sharks uh, chowing down on their cables. Oh, no. And we know sharks will eat a lot of different things, but yeah. I knew now that's what happened. Yeah. Didn't I say when our connection went down at the old place, it was the sharks? Sure. Blame the sharks. I always blame the sharks. Well, Google is because apparently they've had a problem with the, the sharks eating their cables. They think it's the... Um, is he really? Wow, he's attacking that thing. Yeah. They think it's the electrical impulses in the cable are <laughs> similar enough to their prey to uh, kind of fool them. Really? Yeah. So, so one, of the, one of the senses sharks use is electrical impulses, electrical signals. They can detect that in their prey. And... Uh, they, wow. So what's Google doing about it? 
Uh, to be honest, I don't know. I, aren't they? Um, <laughs> didn't I hear that they were they're, like they're degrading sharks in the rankings? Right. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> they're sending out yeah. the, the, sharks don't get better good yeah. search results on yeah. Google. And and I, I think they just launched a swarm of giant grouper to go uh, right. The situation. Right. Right. Yes. Google Grouper. <laughs> Google yeah. Grouper. There you go. Google Labs. Problem solved. <laughs> Actually, I think I, I did hear um, that they were trying to uh, encase them in like a Kevlar or something. That that way it can't. They the, it blocks the signal or it's stronger or yeah. something. At least the sharks can't bite through. At it. least they can't bite through it and put my internet down. And that probably should have been a school of Grouper, not a flock of grouper unless they're <laughs> flying fish all of a sudden that would be bad That's all right dog pellets flock of groupers <laughs> you know <laughs> speaking of flying oh. let's go to mars oh okay yeah we're done with the sharks now we're going to talk a little bit about things that are happening out in space what's going on in mars so uh, i got approved for that mars mission by the way just as an update i'm going to mars when do you leave 2025 i think really yeah can i go no oh. You didn't get. Yeah, I don't think Wendy would like that very much. Well, she can come too. We'll all go to Mars. It'll be a fun time. <laughs> this thing is a one-way mission. Come yeah, on, I'm not yeah. going to Mars. <laughs> it's a whole, whole thing on death. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, but so there's a, there's obviously a lot of exploration going on on Mars. We're sending up rovers and doing all kinds of things to explore uh, the Martian surface a little bit more. So there's a a kick is it Kickstarter. There's a company uh, so it's seeking. A crowd, yeah, it's no, I don't think it's, it's Indiegogo, yeah. Yeah, Indiegogo, sorry, not Kickstarter. Uh, Exolance is seeking uh, $250,000 to fund a project that will basically use bunker buster technology. Of so that when it uses bunker buster technology. It does. So they're basically going to send these, uh, they call them arrows, or these giant, like, uh, almost rocket-like spear things, and they're going to penetrate the soil, okay. and they're going to try to find water that's uh -huh. underneath the soil at different layers. So that so I have water them. in 2025 when I get there. Well, they'll they'll know if there's water by the time you get there. So fingers what, crossed. What happens if I don't? What if they don't find water? What are they gonna do? Then you got to come back. Hmm. <laughs> I'm rethinking this whole mission yeah. to Mars thing. Yeah, that well, whole that whole cool. beach vacation they sold you on is <laughs> probably beach not Beach vacation there. in Mars. <laughs> so yeah, these lances are called arrows, and basically what's gonna happen is. Um, when they have different landers that are approaching the surface, they'll fire these things, shoot them into the soil, and try to see if they can find water. Well, apparently a lot of people want to be able to see the water being found on Mars because $14,000 has already been funded, and there are still like 39 days left. Yep. Um, they're seeking $250,000, though, so that's quite a bit. They need some help. We're going to have to uh, pick it up a little bit. Yeah. To get the 250, but if they do get the 250, they're going to take the idea to NASA and see if they can get it uh, implemented. All right. Good luck, guys. Well, good luck, and uh, good luck to you during this commercial break. I'm going to miss you, but you know we were talking about Mars and sharks. I, I've been thinking about—I mean, sharks. I've been thinking about sharks in the question of whether I would go in a cage dive with sharks. I think I would. You would? You'd go cage diving? You know, sometimes you have to do things to get over your fears, right? Absolutely. I think getting in the water with giant sharks is a good way to do it. Will you join me? Go to gibby.tv slash famespot and let us know. Hey guys, welcome back to Geek Beat Live. I'm Callie Lewis. I'm Scott Ellis. Yes, you are. <laughs> why, why did good you say that Good to be here with you guys way? today. I don't know. You were looking at me when you said your name, so... <laughs> I'm Scott Ellis. Good to see you guys. How's it going? <laughs> All right. It is the most important time of the entire show. Well, that can only mean one thing. Unboxing! Woo! No. no. We haven't no. quite gotten to unboxings yet, Dave. Uh, it's no. robot time! Yeah. <laughs> robots. You like robots, right? I actually love robots. Yay! I love robots. Now, I, I know eventually they are going to kill us, but I love robots. <laughs> I can't win around here. I just want to know where Skynet's really going to start so I can right. be ready. I think it already has. <laughs> um, so, so what's right. going on? Ken is working on it on the data center. Exactly. Lovely. So swarm robots. Now, I've shown you guys some swarm robots before. These are robots, little robots. They're not like full-on ones with heads and arms and all of these. They're little miniature robots. 
that can work together. So you get hundreds or thousands of these things together, and they literally follow along with each other and make up for each other's mistakes, and they accomplish tasks. Well, in the past, swarm robots really haven't、um, been available in any significant way, but now. You can buy your very own swarm set. We can buy a swarm set. You can. Oh,、the、just a matter of time. Kilobots、uh, come in packs of ten dollars. I'm sorry, come in packs of ten for twelve hundred dollars. And、uh, these things, unfortunately, Harvard came through. You know how、uh, John and I like to argue about Harvard versus MIT, but. The guys at Harvard do some really cool stuff, and I'm surprised that a robot story is coming out of Harvard. That's pretty cool.、Um, these things are about the size of a quarter, and、uh, they have been demonstrated with groups of like a hundred. But、uh, actually, now they're working with groups of a thousand.、Um, they have wide-angle IR transceivers to communicate with each other, and so what they can do is they can make large shapes, they can accomplish tasks, like I said. And if one gets out of line, then the others will communicate with it and bring it back. Ro- robot discipline. Robot discipline. I like it. How fun would it be to get a thousand of those things and have them in here one morning, just so when John <gasps> comes in, there's like、that、robots would, everywhere. You have、um, how much would that be? Twelve thousand dollars. No, have, more than that. You have、uh, like one hundred twenty thousand dollars to spend on that. Because if you have that, we have a Geek House Wall of Fame that you could.、Um, <laughs> Maybe、I'll write you a check <laughs> later. <laughs> yeah, These things actually called killbots. They're called kill, kilobots. Oh, kilobots. Okay, that's much better. <laughs> Not killbots. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, I'm excited. I do want to pack a ten, though. Yeah. At least ten, just to, to roam around here. It's pretty cool. Because we have our CEA bots out、mm-hmm. there. And other bots、uh, with the、uh, iRobots. And we've seen some other kinds of stuff like this, where different robots were flying in formation and doing some cool stuff like that.、Right. I think that was an MIT project, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, probably. But we haven't seen that in a while. Anyway. Flying robots. I'm I'm dipping into the trans into the automobile section. What is that? Planes, trains, and automobiles. But this is a、um, an unmanned aerial vehicle that the Navy is using. It is called the Northrop Grumman X 47B, and we have video of this. It's unmanned. It's basically a drone going in there. So that was the F 18, and then they actually follow it up with the right, right. the、uh, X 47B. There it goes. It's a pretty cool looking aircraft. It does look cool. And I want to、uh, fly in it, but I'm not allowed. No. Well, it's interesting when you take the pilot out of an aircraft, especially in in combat types of aircraft, it greatly expands the things that they can do with that airplane, right? Because you don't have the dependency of a person, the、right. G forces, all those kinds of things. It can be completely erratic. Yep. And totally、uh, misbehave, right? Yeah, completely irrational. Right. <laughs> no, there's usually still somebody behind the scenes that's controlling it. Yeah. But just not in the aircraft.、Uh, but this is a combat aircraft. It has. Um, it is going to have capability for、uh, delivering payloads. That's awesome. And、uh, well, yeah, these aren't payloads you would want to be on the receiving no, end of. No, God no, because <laughs> it's the Navy after all. So,、um, but they are they are going through testing processes with this.、Yeah. As it comes back, it can fold itself up, get smaller, and do all sorts. Yeah, folds of up cool the wings. Stuff. Yeah. Tucks away nicely on the ship. Exactly. No pilot. All right, we'll keep you updated if we hear more about the testing. Now,、let's、planes, trains, and automobiles. Let's bring、time. it back to the ground and let's talk about Uber.、Oh, so apparently, Uber,、um, Uber there are, is well. Let's set up what Uber is for anybody who doesn't know. Good, good point. So, so Uber, Uber is a service that、um, allows people to find car rides around town. So you you land in a city and you get an Uber ride to take you to the airport or just around town if you live in a city. Instead of having a car in places like New York and LA and San、They're、Francisco, here in Dallas, here in Dallas、yep. that it works out really well.、Um, you could just say, "Hey, I need an Uber ride," and catch a ride with、uh, somebody who is just a driver for them. Yep, yep. Just fire up the app, and they'll、yep. find somebody that's close to your location, send them out to you, and you can、uh, jump in the car, and they'll take you where you want to go. What's been going on with Uber? So apparently,、um, some people have been getting a little bit confused. About some of the Uber cars and mistaking the,、uh, non-Uber cars for Uber cars, and they're just like jumping into somebody's back seat that has a Toyota Prius or something like that.、Uh, so it's a little bit interesting. So, I think. So, okay, let me get this straight. So you, you call for an Uber ride, 
And uh, then it says, like it literally tells you how long away that person is. So it says, okay, they're five minutes away. So then as you see the five minutes are up, then somebody pulls up to your location because they're just going to stop and go to the grocery store. Yeah. You hop on in? You just jump that's on in. That's what's going on? And, and that's exactly what's going on. So people have been complaining. They've been taking it to social media and voicing their concerns with Uber. And Uber said, like, you know, the, the, when we respond to a person who's requested a car, it comes with a photo of the driver, the license plate number. There's a whole bunch of information you right. get so that you can get in the right car. <laughs> But, you know, we're all a little hurried and sometimes a little lazy, and so people are just jumping in the wrong car. <laughs> Not good. That explains a lot. <laughs> that explains a lot. Have you gotten into... These are, these are also the same people yeah. that can't find their cars at Walmart, and they're just wandering the park. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> of, 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 of groceries. Exactly right. Well, if you use a service like that, obviously you want to pay attention to the information that's been given to you so that... Uh, I mean, my natural instinct is... Okay, you have a name, right, yep. with the Uber service. And so, a picture. My, I mean, my first instinct when I get into an Uber car would be to kind of lean over and be like, "Hey, are you Mark?" <laughs> you know, just mean, jump in the you, back seat. I mean, why would you just? And why are you getting in the back seat? This is not like a cab service. Wouldn't you get in the front seat? No, when I took Uber, we sat Uber, we sat in the back seat. Really? Well. Yeah, it was like a, I would a black. You, you, know, you know, so you can talk and yeah. get to know each other. Lincoln Town car. Maybe they'll let I don't you know. drive. Maybe. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking about buying a Prius and just driving around to see if people will jump in. <laughs> Take them for a ride. We'll have some fun. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Scott, you had this problem? No. Oh. Because <laughs> I thought you were a little more careful than that. Yeah. I don't know how to get in because the doors are locked. Right. All right. Well, we're, we're already getting the signal again, but... You have one more story for real us. Real quick, the FAA has jumped in and shutting down aerial ride sharing. So kind of like Uber for air. Right. There are some laws and apparently there were some loopholes that, that pilots were using where they could uh, share their expenses and if somebody wanted a ride to a place they were going, yeah, you could chip like in and pay a little bit. Jet sharing. The FAA kind of came in and said, no, this is, this is commercial uh, Wait aircraft. a second. This has been going on for years and years and years. Yeah, apparently uh, the loophole started in around 1963. So longer than I've even been alive. And uh, they're wow. now saying that no more, no more. So there are a couple of companies out there like Air Pooler and, and uh, Flight Now that are going to be affected by this. So we'll see what happens. But they're saying, yeah, this is, uh, this is commercial. And Interesting. you're going to be regulated okay. like the rest of them. So, so the FAA, I think that's unfortunate. Wow. You know, I just I, I want those guys out of my life more. If I want to <laughs> go fly with somebody, I want to go fly. Right. You know, I'll Let make us... that choice. Let us talk, fly with who we who we want to fly with. We're paying them. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, we'll keep you updated on that. I'm very disappointed to hear that. Uh, we are going to have unboxings. Is it time? Not right this second. Oh. We got to go to commercial break. All right. And then we're going to have late. unboxings. It's like Christmas all the time. Every Friday. It is around the geek house. Okay, I'm going to put on hat? my Santa suit. No, you should put on your Santa suit. I don't have a Santa hoot. Santa hoot? Santa suit? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you guys agree with me? While you're watching the commercials, he's gonna go put on the Santa suit. Fine. Santa suit. Bring me the hat. The powder's wearing off anyway. Yay! We're back. Boxing time. Oh, it's Christmas time. Here we Wait, go. Where's the Santa suit? Oh, I tried it on. It didn't fit very well. Cause you've lost so much weight. When yeah. It you're just falling off of me. Well, good job. Thanks. We'll we'll alter it. Next but week. it's still Christmas time. <laughs> Let's, Let's open get some boxes. To it. Which what one do we want? have? I, I'm just anxious to find out what that thing is this right thing? there that's already unboxed. I don't know right. if it's supposed to be an unboxing or not. Because it's not in a box. Well, it looks cool enough, so let's find out. it looks out. very interesting. This is called the Air Lighter from Bison, the portable rapid fire starter. Ooh, oh. fire. We love fire. John P. Uh, is going to yeah. kill us for unboxing. Well, he wasn't. Hang on. Oh. <laughs> it doesn't need anything, actually. Look no, at I that. think it's already open. It's already open. Oh See, my goodness, John! Looks P. very cool. Well, he's not here, so guess who gets to play with the fire starter? Your air lighter experience starts now. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's quite dusty, <sighs> Dave. <laughs> Okay, so pull it out. Let's see what we got here. 
<laughs> Dave didn't like that much. So there's, we have the butane, the air lighter fuel. Oh, can we Apparently attach we it? Can plug we that ahead? in. It looks like. Uh, do you think yeah, we should do that? That goes in here. See. In the studio. Probably not. We yeah. should probably wait till we go out. So there's the. You can see the levels of the butane through that clear glass, and then we have uh, power right here. Oh, no, Nothing's going to happen right They've also got a little second. light, like a little LED oh, light. Nice. So if you're using it at night, maybe you're lighting a campfire or something, you can actually see what you're getting to before Where? you actually Where get the that? fire. Right here? Yeah. That's a light? It looks like or it. Or is it a mirror? Is it a light no, or a light. mirror? No, it's light. Two little LED lights. Oh, I see. Okay. I, I was seeing it from the wrong I angle. I think it just kind of looks cool, too. I like it. OMG, I can't wait. I'm going to use this before John P. Well, what do you say we put this away for now so we don't start any fires in the geek house? <laughs> All right. We don't want to burn the place down. All right. What else we got over here? <laughs> Wait, how much is that, guys? We have no idea. Wait, yeah, so the, the chat room can tell us. What was the name of it again? Infora. Air lighter. Infora air lighter. Bison air lighter. Let us know. How much Let is it? Let us know. We need one. Get the other box. Everybody uh, needs a hobby. Let's jump over here. Okay. What do you say? That's a small box. No knife required yet. Oh, yeah, awesome. Um, so this is the Monster uh, Superstar. So the Superstar is, actually we saw this at CE mm -hmm. Week. Um, so this is a waterproof speaker, or water resistant as they like to say. Dibs. Speaker. Uh, I don't think you can call <laughs> dibs. Everybody's calling dibs. Monster makes good stuff. Monster does make good stuff. Yeah. All right, let's get this unboxed. There we go. Pull it out there. I'll let you do it. All I already right. used my knife. Yep. I'm happy. This thing is Come uh, on, not Scott. coming out easy. Come on. What you doing? I'm working on it. <laughs> so, Am I missing something? Is there no. a, like a sticker on here? There we go. Almost. Is it? Okay, no, this, wait, this wait, is not going to end Hold well. Hold on, I see, I see. <laughs> oh, that. <laughs> nice. <laughs> we all have our moments. Yeah, well, first show, what can I say? <laughs> so uh, this is... It's little, it's lightweight, but it's it's good quality. And it, ooh, feel that, ooh. Oh, that is nice. The rubberized bag, mm -hmm. yeah, nice. Oh, is that, oh, that's like the little sun. Okay. That's the speaker. Yeah, that's the speaker. Mm -hmm. So uh, cool. you've got a chrome plate right here for the speaker itself. And up top we have power, minus plus for volume, Bluetooth signal, and, uh, oh, that's the mic. Oh, wait, mic. Oh, for speaaker phone. You can oh, use very this nice. Speaker phone. Very nice. Awesome. And so it's water resistant, so, so take it's water to the resistant. beach. Yeah, no Lee at CE Week literally poured a cup of water over it. Really? And it was bouncing, like, because it sounds really good. And the bass was going. It just, like, splat water up. Sounds like fun. It even comes with a nice little mesh bag that's nice. uh, porous, so you don't. Uh... And an easy open box. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're going to pay for that. Yeah. <laughs> sure, I will. All right, let's see what else we got over here. Moving on. <laughs> let's do this one because I'm dying to know what's in here. I hope this is actually meant to be an unboxing. Okay, let's see. Is oh, yeah, hang on. Flip it. I can... <laughs> nice. What is that? I have no <laughs> idea. Okay. You knife oh, that knife. thing. Okay. We'll see what's going on over here. I have a feeling this Turkey, is Turkey, almond, Lynn. cranberry, protein bars? <laughs> Lynn, is this your fault? Your if fault. it's food, it's usually Lynn's fault, okay. right? Okay, yes, it is. The original <laughs> cricket bar. Wait, a cricket bar? What is that? Okay, I'm not so sure about this now. No, I don't think. Protein from cricket flour. You can have that one. Wow, this is the Aztec bar. I'll have the dark chocolate coffee and cayenne. Turkey almond cranberry, just in time for Thanksgiving. What is that? Uh, Epic. Epic. Yeah. Oh, this so is that's the, like a protein bar. It's a protein bar. This is gluten no free. Soy. Choco bar, peanut butter and chocolate. Ooh. Ooh. Soy free, oh, hang on. milk free. I think this is Geek Fit approved. Hold on, I think. Uh, you gonna open one? This is peanut butter and chocolate. Come on, of course I'm opening oh, it. No, you have to eat the cricket bar. The cr this is a cricket bar. Oh, it is a cricket bar? All of these okay. are cricket bars. Maybe Try it. I hope not. Although, we did see Callie eat a scorpion. Of course I ate a scorpion. Wow. That was actually really good. That's actually really good. Hmm. All right. Well. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Where's the open one? <laughs> yeah, I 
Over there. Right. Ah, wait, wait! Peanut butter and chocolate, that's mine! No. I have two bad. Alright, we got yeah. one box left. Are we gonna open it? Open it. Alright, let's do it. I feel healthier already. <laughs> Man, I lost my peanut butter and chocolate bar. Thank you, Lynn. <gasps> oh, now this is awesome. <gasps> what is this? The Okie Dokies. Smart locks with smart keys. Alright, pull it out. Okie Dokies. Okay, so this is like a home automation thing. Is this a Kickstarter? No, it looks like it's available. You guys, look this up, Okie Dokies. And yes, I ate Scorpion. And you can see the video at youtube.com slash geekbeat TV. Okay, so there are two pieces here. Your smartphone becomes your keys. So, okay, this uh, installs on your deadbolt. This one, what, what about that one? Is that the same? Uh, it looks like it goes next to it. It's uh, maybe a receiver. I'm not sure. Oh, uh, okay. It's uh, This is for like using RFID tags on in your mobile phone. Ah, very so. cool. Open that one up. <clears throat> ah! Oh, lots <laughs> of stickers. I won. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, wow, they're good looking too. Oh, wow, pull that out. So you have different covers to go over them depending on what kind of uh, door decor you have, so. Okay, so this is the, the lock That's itself. the actual mechanism, That's but the... we can take the cover off. Oh, okay. Wait, is that, go, is that upside down? Um, Maybe. Depends on <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> I don't know. Is there a picture is on the it... box? Oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah. The, you were had it right. You uh -huh, had it right. See? Nice. <laughs> okay, so then you have a, a piece back here that yep, goes that on the mounts. other side. So yeah, you mount this to uh, the wall or the door. Yeah, and then and that then this goes on. just slips right onto it. And then you would attach it to your phone and uh, maybe hold your phone up probably to the door lock. Uh, or maybe the app itself allows you to unlock it physically um, from afar. That's we'll really have cool. to check, we'll have to look into it. This one is the the RFID reader. Oh, look, it has a little screwdriver. I love little screwdrivers. Oh, they come with their own tools. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to have to like unbox this and test it. And hmm, whose door are we going to do it on? After my, maybe do it on my office door. I think you already have a lock on your office oh. door. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Pacey. But I'll take it home and try it. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much uh, for hanging out with us throughout the week at geekbeat.tv and of course live on Fridays on Geekbeat Live. So much fun to be here. Thank you for having me. Scott, great job. Thank you. You guys let them know how we did. Leave a comment below and uh, we will see you around. All right, you go guys have a great him. weekend. Wait, go follow him. Twitter.com slash VS Ellis or Google.com slash plus Scott Ellis. And at Callie Lewis on Twitter and Google.com plus Callie Lewis. Lewis. You know where to find her. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, guys. guys.